This is the sixth Sunday in Lent, the last week of Lent. It is a day that we call Palm Sunday, and I'm delighted to welcome you to worship with Portage United Church of Christ. Palm Sunday brings Lent to a close. It also opens up the week into Holy Week, which is the week that leads us into Easter. These seven days, then, are the defining days of our lives as followers of Jesus. Despite all the attention given to December 24th, it is this week, these next seven days, that are the defining moment for us. Given this, we will be offering some additional worship opportunities this week. On Thursday, Monday, Thursday, we will be offering an additional online prayer service that you can access on our YouTube channel and watch any time, any number of times you would like throughout the weekend. Monday, Thursday is the day that we remember Jesus's last supper with his disciples before he was arrested and tried and executed by the Roman state. In addition to our online service, we are also offering on Thursday an in-person service here at the church at 7 p.m. It will be outdoors on our line, and it's a BYO communion service. We ask that you BYO, bring your own elements for communion, some simple bread or crackers, as well as a simple beverage, water, juice, tea, no alcohol, please. We also ask that you BYO your own chair to sit on. Since we will be outdoors, you'll want to bring a lawn chair or a blanket to sit on. And finally, BYO and wear a mask. Here at PUCC, we are fervent in our desire to keep everyone as healthy and safe as possible. So we do require that everyone wear masks and we will be maintaining social distance at this outdoor service. Our worship service today reminds us that even though our Lenten journey with these healing stories is coming to an end, our call for healing never ends. We are called as disciples of Jesus to always be open to and to receive healing and transformation that God through Christ brings to our lives. But this is not just for our personal selves. We are also called to always be aware of and always be active agents for the healing and transformation 
of all God's people and all of God's creation. So let us take a moment now to breathe deeply and to prepare our hearts and our minds and our bodies for worship. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them back immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and the crowds that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee.
We have approached confession each week in Lent in such a way that we lay bare the brokenness in order to begin the process of healing. Along the way, we have acknowledged our need to restore our own holy vessels while attending to our role in the healing of the community and of the world. The work of healing will continue as we integrate all we have learned with all that we will do moving forward. For now, we remember how hard it is to move from thinking to doing. Let us pray. Forgiving God, we have opened ourselves to healing. And sometimes it is easier to pray nice prayers than to do the hard work of putting into action what needs to happen. Help us remember the sacred nature of the holy vessels that we are, fragile and susceptible to shattering and yet capable of transformation. Help us to see ourselves as you see us. Help us to believe in our ability to change and heal as you believe in us. Help us, healer. Show us our strength. Forgive our inertia. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Know this, you are never alone in the struggle, no matter what. Jesus is on a journey with us. Life's parade is not passing you by. You are part of the body of Christ, a community seeking healing. For you, for me, and for us all. The peace of Christ is with you and also with you. Amen. And after getting into a boat, he crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, stand up, take your bed and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. 
When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. Life is about the journey, not the destination. Are you familiar with that platitude? It pops up a lot on Facebook, and it's been sung about by the likes of Miley Cyrus, as well as Aerosmith. It's meant to remind us that what is of greatest value, what is of greatest import, is how we grow along our way through life. What we do with all these experiences and encounters in our life, that's what matters more than where we end up. Life is about the journey, not the destination. Well, I suppose that's true sometimes. But if you ask me, in my opinion, often it's both, especially when Jesus is involved. These past five weeks, our Lenten journey has led us through the healing stories in Matthew's Gospel. We have journeyed with people whose destination was Jesus. A person with leprosy, a Roman centurion, two men who were blind, a woman who'd been bleeding for 12 years, a religious authority whose daughter just died, and now today, friends bringing their companion who is paralyzed. Now, we don't know what happened on their journey to find Jesus. We don't know what tremendous growth experiences they had or what great insights they gained. I'm sure they had them. We just know what happened when they reached their destination. Physical healing, yeah, but we also witnessed so much more. Restoration to community, mercy, unbind, unbounded, renewal of life, forgiveness, transformation. And I'm going to take a wild guess here, but you know, I'm willing to bet that after these folks had their encounter at their destination, they embarked on a whole new and different journey. Maybe kind of like those three travelers that we hear about at the start of Matthew's Gospel. Those three travelers whose destination was the child Jesus. And after they had their encounter, they journeyed home by another way. And today, our Lenten journey through these healing stories brings us to our Lenten destination, Palm Sunday. The day of shouting Hosanna and waving our palms as Jesus makes his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Yet, as we all know, Palm Sunday is not simply a destination. It's the beginning of a journey with a destination at the end of the week. But there's also a very pivotal destination that takes place on this very first day of palms and hosannas, a destination that isn't typically a part of the story we hear on Palm Sunday. Jesus's entrance into Jerusalem was a royal one, literally. It was an entrance like any visiting dignitary in Jesus' day would have received. The crowds came out of the city to welcome this person with shouts of acclamation. 
They would lay their cloaks along the way and throw branches along the way, just like Matthew describes it. Riding on a donkey, though, that's something different. That was how the kings of the Hebrew scriptures entered Jerusalem. And by shouting out, Hosanna to the son of David, the crowds are acknowledging that Jesus is just like those kings. In fact, Jesus will be their king because he is the rightful heir to the great King David. So this Palm Sunday journey then makes clear to anyone who is paying attention that Jesus is the king, the Messiah. It's the destination that will reveal to us what the Messiah's reign will look like. As soon as he enters the city, Jesus heads straight to the temple. That's his destination. And as soon as he gets there, he chases out the money changers and the sellers of all those sacrificial doves, not because they themselves were the problem. The problem was all these worshipers who would come in and buy their goods and look all hoity-toity and pious by making all these wonderful offerings and neglect the plight of their neighbors. So as soon as Jesus has cleansed the temple and transformed his house from a den of thieves into a house of prayer, guess what happens next? The blind and the lame come to him and he heals them. This, my friends, is the Palm Sunday destination. The temple, the church, the sanctuary, is transformed into a house of healing. Because the power that Jesus brings as the Messiah is the power to heal. In our final healing story, which we just heard, the crowds are in awe at what they witnessed. Jesus extends forgiveness and restores the body of this paralyzed person. <laughs> but there's another line there, a crucial line that tells us what the next stage of our journey is now that we have found our destination in Jesus. They glorified God who gave such authority to human beings. Who gave such authority to human beings. That's us. We human beings have been given such authority. In Christ, God gives us authority to heal, to restore community, to renew life, to extend mercy and forgiveness, to bring about transformation. The authority is in our hands. Just as Jesus turned the temple into a place of healing, we too, my beloved siblings in Christ, we 
too are called to transform our church into a destination of healing for all those who are journeying toward us. As we journey with Jesus this holy week, let us seek to find, to know, to understand the ways that we are called to make our church a destination of healing and transformation for all God's people, for all of God's creation. In your love, make us whole. May we rest in your compassion. Calm the lost, weary soul. In the warmth of your love, may your peace fill our hearts. May we know of Jesus by your grace you console make us holy make us healer of our every ill, especially when we find it difficult to believe or trust that sorrow will end. We come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. Even when we cannot seem to believe it, we know that you see beauty in our brokenness. We pray especially for those who feel that there is no end to sorrow, that no matter what we do or how hard we work to bring peace and justice to our world, it feels like we cannot gain any traction. We give thanks that when we cannot bring ourselves to the healing source of your love. There are others around us that through words and actions bring us hope once again. Help to also be those who offer hope when we have the opportunity on this parade of compassion called life. We pray this day for As we wave and lay our palms before Jesus as he enters the city, we bring all that we are, all that we have, and all that you have created us to be, continuing in prayer with the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and thine the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship this week. On behalf of everyone here at Portage United Church of Christ, I want to wish you a blessed Holy Week and a joyous Easter. And I hope you will join us for Easter worship next week. We will premiere as usual on our YouTube channel at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Jesus loved those who were deemed unlovable, and he proclaimed healing in the midst of despair. We are called to do the same. Following Jesus is not an easy task, my friends, but it is the only way we become whole again, by participating in the holy endeavor of bringing about the reign of God here on earth as it is in heaven. The challenges of this call will be brought into sharp focus for us as we enter Holy Week. May we have the courage to follow Jesus, even to the broken places. And now, my friends, go with the confidence that God is making each of us whole and holy, recovering our depth of love for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. Take heart, my beloved child. And may the Holy Spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Amen. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in your suffering world, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace. Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. Rest for the ravaged earth, oceans and streams. Plundered and poisoned, our future, our dreams. Lord, and our madness, carelessness, greed. Make us content with the things that we need. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, let tears fall like rain. Change our love from a spark to a flame. Lighten our darkness, breathe on this flame until your justice burns brightly again. Until the nations learn of your ways, seek your salvation and bring you their praise. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we Change our love from a spark to a flame. Oh, from a spark 
to us.